Welcome to CAS 133, Columbia Gorge Community College, the Dallas, Oregon, Mrs. Hewitt Instructor. Well, we're up to week nine. Term is slowly coming to an end here. So we're going to do a couple of different things in this week. You're going to again have your support information here. And hopefully you have... Second, I need to turn that off so it looks like it's in student view. Hang on. Okay, hopefully you printed the tips and tricks last week like I suggested because you're going to want them out again for you this week because they have tips and tricks for both weeks on them, not just for last week. So, you've got some support material here. But one of the big things is this kind of note up here. It says, note for next week. So that's going to be week 10. You'll be using Access. Access is a program that does not come in all versions of Office. If you have a student teacher home use version, Access is probably not there. Now, if you bought it from the college, from the bookstore in the last few months, like you bought a new one for this class, you're probably okay, but you really need to go check. And to do that, you simply go to your Start button, go to All Programs, go down until you find your folder that says it's Office. Don't get sidetracked playing the games open the folder and you'll see the list of what's there. If you do not find access with that red A, that means your computer does not have the program. What happens if you do not have the program? You have to put your backup plan in place for one week and find another machine that does. Sometimes students will say, well, I've got an A going. I'll just skip that project, and then it won't really matter. Okay, maybe I'll get a B, but it's okay. It won't really matter. I don't have to put that effort out. Uh, rem quick reminder, go back to your syllabus and read that part that says you must pass one application project from Word, from PowerPoint, and from Excel, and you must have at least a C on the Excel project to pass the class. So, if you, my bad, access project to pass the class, not Excel, that was my bad, um, access project. So if you just go, ah, I'm going to skip it, it won't really matter that much. Mm, that's the difference between passing the class and very likely failing the class. So you do need to go find a computer that has it. All the college machines have it. Um, anything with a professional level has it. Um, you need to look at that now not on Saturday morning of the week you're doing access and don't have it. Because the term is going to end really shortly after that and you're not going to have a lot of time to figure this out. So I'm giving you the head start right now. You've also got your PowerPoints here and your information here. And information on how to do a photo story, advanced photo story video, and we'll be talking about that here in a minute. You've got your unit goals, you've got your video, some information about basic themes because that unfortunately is one of those bugaboos for us this week. Basic is probably not there. Don't go look. Get your projects done and then when you're ready to use basic, if it's there, click it now. Because what it tends to do is the first time you open it, it might give you stuff that really isn't going to stay there. And then when you come back, it's gone. Also, B is A, B, C, and when my default opened, it opened like H I J showing up and I had to use the little scroller bar just like you use a scroller bar right here to slide up to find the basic then it never showed up again so if you happen to have it grab it quick and use it if you don't happen to have it read this you can match the colors it's basically a color and font thing and it's you can match them you can match them close enough probably that I'm not even going to be able to tell the difference to speak of. Although some people I think have a little issue with matching colors. I've had some really interesting colors. Go to your overview and then the week nine photo story. And then some instructional materials about photo story. And this is a transcript. Now this is really only there if for some reason you can't use the audio part. Like you have no speakers or you can't get your sound to work. Um, you're hearing impaired, whatever it happens to be, there is a transcript. So most of you won't need that, I hope. Here's kind of a sampler of things and then your checklist. 
So you're going to do the second Excel project. So here are your data files. And we'll hop over here and look at it for a second. This is what it's going to basically look like. And you're going to be doing some coloring. Some of the highest and lowest averages, so you're going to have to be really careful on that. This is a light green, a kind of a pale green. It's hard to tell with this light, but it's a nice pale green. Do not give me shocking green, by the way. Don't give me dark forest green. You can get it close. The book is much closer than this looks like because of the computer. And then you're going to go over here, and you can kind of see the font. So you can see what the font is. You can see what the font is at the top. You can kind of see it's it, what it is down here, and you're going to want to match that. You're going to see that you've got this nice underline going here. And so you're going to make sure you get that done. It's also named Salary Report, so you're going to make sure you do that as well. We'll come back to this when we're ready for the next part. Now, when you're going to, I'm going to talk a little bit about final project. When you get to do your final project, it is very creative. There's a whole video on it. There's sets of video directions when we get there. But this week we're learning another tool. It's not a tool you're going to actually use. It's a tool you're going to learn about by watching and viewing this information. So you need to go through this information. It is a still image program that does some automatic scrolling that you can control that creates a video in the end. Um, if you've ever dealt with a funeral situation and they take a lot of still pictures of the person that's passed and they create this cool video at the end and they present it and they charge you $200 or more for it, $500 for it. Um, this will do the same type of thing. I mean, you can make something like that with this. I did, unfortunately, we lost a granddaughter, and I made that for her funeral um, instead of paying the price to have someone else do it. You can do it for 50th wedding anniversaries. You can do it for <laughs> trips. You can do it for, you know, weddings. You can do it for, I mean, all sorts of, of uses. Also, if you've ever been someplace like, I don't know, the airport or the college or any place that has kind of a, a video going that loops over and over and over that you can kind of watch this sort of over and over presentation, this is what can make that as a video if you want to do that. And then you just stick repeat on and guess what? You walk off to do whatever you need and it plays along. State fairs, 4-H clubs. I mean, there are all sorts of uses for this program. Now, sometimes people say, well, it's not academic. Oh, it can very much be academic. I use this in teaching. I made photo stories that I used to teach lessons with and start lessons with. Um, it's a great attention grabber. My own kids used it in college multiple times to put presentations together and to present. Um, Especially if you're really shy and have a heck of a time giving a speech and standing up front, you can do all your own narration, have it all done, set, ready to go, and run it. And basically your task that day is start the thing and let it go. When it gets done, any questions, and you're done. Now obviously you have to have an instructor that, that fits into the requirement of the assignment. But it definitely can be used academically. It can definitely be used in a workplace. Presentations to to board members, presentations to um, stockholders, uh, you're doing a training for new employees. I mean, there are a lot of different business, personal, academic uses. So when you do the form that says, you know, what are some of the differences between the program, please don't focus on, well, this is, this is usable at home and this one's not, or whatever. Um, think. Think a little farther than that. Think a little deeper than that. Get to know the programs a little better. Now, I will tell you right now that it will not load on Windows 8 machines, unfortunately. So if you're using a Windows 8 machine and you want to do photo story, you're going to want to make sure you have some time that finals week to go up to the college and actually use their machines because it is on some of the library machines for your use. So just keep that in mind as you're planning that. And like I said, there'll be details. And some people say, oh, I don't want to use PhotoStory because I haven't ever used it and I'm scared of it and it's my final project and I don't want to take that chance. 
I look at it a little bit different. You're in the class to learn. This is a chance to learn. Are you going to step up to the plate and learn, or are you going to take the easy way out and chicken out and go with something you know? Obviously, I would rather have you learn something. So therefore, I look at using Photo Story as a really good opportunity to prove to me you're going to learn something new. So given that, I'm pretty lenient on the grading of photo stories as long as you follow the requirements. Um, it's hard to get a bad photo story, to be honest. I think the lowest I've ever given for a photo story is a B. I don't think I can say that for PowerPoints. Um, so it's just, just something to keep in mind that it is a really good option for your final project. So you need to do some learning about it, because if you don't learn something about it, how are you going to ever consider even using it? And this should help walk you through all of that. You've got your data files that you're going to need to have to go with your project. And then we're down to submissions. Now, before we're ready to kind of go there, we need to talk application project. So let me see if I can get the right thing pulled up here. There we go. So here's your application project for the first one. Consider this your turn. And you're going to go in here, and your parents believe that your late night studying sessions and household appliance use contribute to excessive le electricity bills. No, I thought it was always the uh, three hour shower. Well, it wasn't quite that long. And, but it was a 30 minute shower, and the fact you didn't turn any lights off behind yourself when you left a room contributed to ours with our kids. And by the way, my girl was shorter in the shower than my boys were. Yeah, go figure that one out. But anyway, this case, in this scenario, your parents have decided it's your studying and your household appliance use. So you tried to, decided to try to prove to them wrong by analyzing your monthly electricity consumption. So that doesn't mean every appliance in the house is in this story. It's just the ones that you would be using. You research the energy consumption of your personal items and appliance for usage to obtain consumption costs per hour for each item. And then you've got some data for going to do this. Now, I've got some of the answers written in, so I'm going to kind of slide this up with my hand over that. And you're going to do the clothes dryer and how much it costs per hour and how many hours you use it. You're going to do the same thing for your computer, a Blu-ray player, light bulb, sound system, television, washing machine, etc. And then you're going to look at, hang on, Just let me fix that. You're going to look at, um, there we go, the total use. And your questions are, now that you've looked over your results, did you neglect to include any appliances? If you're a coffee drinker and you drink a ton of coffee when studying, then you need to add that coffee machine. If you print a lot, you need to probably put in a printer. I mean, you may need to add a few things or not. And then how did you determine the costs you used in your calculation? Now some of you are starting to get shorter and shorter. Remember there's a 200 word requirement for discussing this once you have your questions in there. So you do need to make sure you type the questions and then you type an adequate explanation. And if you didn't use any other appliances then address that. Say you know I don't really use anything else when I'm studying. You know and talk about what you don't use. You know, you can always say something like, you know, I don't need a coffee maker. Or I'm not tending to, you know, run a CD player or a this or a that while I study. But they're saying they're excessive use. So there you go. The other option is if you say, well, oh boy, I don't want to deal with that one. You can come down here and do this. Analyze a profit potential. They give you all the, in oops all the information you're going to need over there to do it. And you just basically walk through. You will also need to calculate how much they need to save as well as the average lowest and highest value. But this project has you doing that, so you should be able to, again, basically go back to the chapter and walk yourself through it. And then again, your questions. Now there is one on internet research if you wanted to do it. That is one where you're supposed to do it in a group, but you are the group. You are person one, two, and three. And 
In this one, you and your friends have decided to subscribe to a new internet service provider, provider and you'd like to maximize services while keeping costs low. So you're going to research somewhere between three and five internet providers in your area. So if you live in Goldendale or you live in Womack or Hood River versus the Dalles, use your local ones. It doesn't do you any good to spend time looking at somebody else's internet providers. If you're rural, you're going to have to be looking at what you have access to. Do you need to go with satellite internet? Um, would the other company be better and cheaper? Um, are you running on a like a cell tower internet? That's what I use. I use the cell tower internet through Verizon. Um, what are your options in your area? Because I'm rural. And that's about it other than satellite and satellite slower. And then once you go through that, you're going to do the cost figures. And then, of course, using the concepts and techniques, you'll complete formatting of the worksheet. And you'll do your questions. Oops, get back down here. We kind of lost it. You're going to be sure to tell me which companies you chose, which services offered the best deals, and what you'd be willing to use. So make sure that you kind of go through that carefully. That might actually might be an appealing one, especially if you're interested to see if you can save money. Internet service providers change over time. Who knows? You might find a better deal. So that kind of walks you through what we'll be doing this week during week nine. It warns you to check for access on your machine now and not later. It does ask you to submit it in formula view and basically when you open Excel I don't know if there's any in here let me look at the template see if I can pull that because sometimes they have it kind of already pre put together I think this will work for us so basically what you use is the control and the accent key. Now it's kind of hard to show you that, but maybe I can get this to swing around and go over my computer here, other than it's sideways. And if you haven't gotten seasick yet, it hasn't been due to the fact I haven't attempted it. Okay, we'll get there in a second. Hang on. Okay, the accent key, as blurry as it is, is right up here. See if there's some point that'll focus. Come on, baby. A little bit of focus would really help us all out here. Aha! All right, so accent key is right up here. It's got this little umlaut and a slash on it. So basically when I hold the control in the accent and I'm in the worksheet, it switches it. So if you look at the worksheet, you'll now notice I see the exact formulas here. I'm now going to use those two keys and it goes back the other way. I'm going to press the control key and push and let go of that accent key. And there I am. Now I need to go up and I need to save this before I submit it. So it says submit it in this view. Now it'll do funky things to it. It may push it to two pages. Don't worry about that. Uh, because basically what happens is I come in here and I look at what you did. Hmm, okay, you've used the correct formulas. And then I pop it back over and it goes back onto one page like it should be to finish the grading project and process with that. And then of course I go in here and I look, have you added in your appropriate document properties and make sure that gets a save after you have done so. Now this is obviously not the one you're doing. I grabbed a template just so you could see how to switch that and where it is on the keyboard. People have fits with that and yet it's a very simple thing. You click your mouse in the computer or into the spreadsheet and you press those two keys and there you go. And hold the control, press the other one. Press and let go. Press and let go. And then when you've got it the way you want, hit the save.
and you should be good to go. So that's what it says when it says submit in formula view. And I do grade down if it doesn't come in in formula view. Ac application project, I don't ask for that, but know that I'm going to make that switch to look at it to make sure you're using formulas just like I looked at week eight the same way. I think we're done for this week. We'll be back for next week.